back. I'm Mikey. I'm Nate. And we're here to help you improve your balance. So today we're going through exercises you can do with your balance pad on the floor. So we've done a product review and a standing video for ways to use the balance pad. And one of the biggest benefits of these pads is the cushioning they provide. A lot of people have a hard time being on their knees, on their hips, on their backs, on their elbows that you use a lot for yoga or other exercises so this gives a, a really gentle way to integrate that absolutely so yeah if you have creaky knees and you can take these to your yoga class you know I really encourage people sometimes people feel like shy or something or unsure like am I is it okay to bring my own props to yoga class I'm telling you yes it is uh, your yoga teacher wants you to be safe and comfortable so if everybody else is doing their lunges and your knees are killing you and you're thinking hey maybe that's normal it's not normal bring a balance pad to yoga class don't make it painful um, or just anytime if you're in a fitness class Pilates or of course doing it with us at home it's really really handy it's a great prop to use so uh, first one I'm gonna demonstrate these and Nate's gonna you know, point some more of them out but first one is just a simple lunge all right so yeah. one one knee is gonna be on the balance pad your hip over the knee other leg out in front. I like having the balance bar here. I can move it around, I can lean into it. It just makes me feel a little more stable. You could use the wall or chair, but this is nice to be able to move around. And when we're doing the lunge, really just think about not necessarily leaning forward, all right, but relaxing the front of that hip, or really staying tall, all right, and then slowly bring it forward. Because that muscle goes all the way from the knee all the way into the lower back. So different ways to get to it there. So yeah, you've got, you've got lots of different muscles here in the hip flexors, um, and so a couple things to notice, yeah, you wanna keep the knee lined up with your ankle, and you can even turn your head backward and check that your back foot's not kinda of going off at a crazy angle, so just more or less generally in alignment. That extra balance bar or the um, chair, something that you wanted to press down into can help you with that lifting feeling up through the torso. And yeah, exactly as Mike was saying, you want to keep that spine nice and tall. We can switch sides here. Yeah, and so sometimes if you, you can see it, if the knee and the hip are, are vertical, that's going to be, you know, a very light and easy stretch. If you want to increase it, just simply bring the pad further back if you've run out of room in the front uh, and you can slide back or you can just step further forward and lean more toward it. So basically you're looking at the angle of this uh, extended hip. This is a really important exercise because we often sit a lot, right? We're sitting during the day, hips are in this flex position, even if they're not loaded, just being in a flex position all the time can make them really stiff and tight. So hip extension, hip lunges can be really, really helpful. So yeah, this is a really nice thing because then your knee is more comfortable, you can stay in it a lot longer. Okay, so keeping that nice arch in the lower back, it's going to be really important. A lot of times we get towards the ground, all right, we want to start to hunch over, but we really want to keep that uh, arch in the lower back. All right, so next one, um, let's scoot back just a little bit. We're going to show you the, um, the side view. So now you're going to take your balance pad and you want to have it the widest uh, side uh, from left to right, okay? And there's a couple different ways to do camel pose. So this is a back uh, stretch and a spinal extension. So the first most important thing is that your hips stay right over your knees. Sometimes in camel pose, people want to shift their hips forward and you get the kind of illusion of a back stretch, but really what you're doing is just compressing your lower back. So keep your hips right above the knees and then you just draw your shoulders back, your elbows can come behind and you think of your spine getting longer. You can actually place your hands on the lower back of the hips. And one thing I actually really like to do with the balance bar is to hold it um, here and you actually, you wanna pull it with your hands and then place it right on the sacrum. So the sacrum is a very strong and stable bone. It's about the size of your hand and it's right here in between your hips, below your lumbar and above the tailbone. And then you can bring the hands slightly inward, the elbows back. And what this does is, uh, you can't see from the side here, but when you're trying to do camel with your hands on your back, you can see it's not in alignment. With the bar, your hands, elbows, and shoulders can now be all lined up. 
and then you can provide a little bit of stability. You're almost pressing forward and down with the bar, and that allows the spine to come up and back, chest can open, the neck can stretch a little bit as long as you don't compress the back of the neck. Don't crank your head, just a light neck extension there is fine now. And because you've got the pad there, your knees should be very comfortable and you can stay a whole lot longer without having pain. How's that feeling? Good. It was uh, so easy to get bent forward and crunched down. It's really nice. And so the um, look at those elbows and arms again. Yeah. With that, that makes a big difference. I, I wasn't ready for how much I'd appreciate that versus just my hands on my hips. But having this balance bar really makes a big difference. You can see my, you know, my elbows are basically in line with my body, my shoulders, my wrists, and yeah, and just leaves you know all the effort you know to, to where you want to open that chest you know getting a little bit of the back bend mm -hmm. yeah and the balance bar is is actually padded a little bit flexible sometimes people try this with a broomstick and it's too hard so i would suggest getting the proper bow yoga balance bar if you're going to be pressing that into your body so the next one we're going to be on all fours for this the cat cow so uh you can use the balance pad for your wrists or your knees or if you have them if you have two you can use both all right, so maybe I'll, I'll use the big one for my knees, right? And then this one splits apart, so I can really put it you know, wherever I want uh, for my wrists and hands there. Yeah, and you can really see a lot of people have pain in the wrists, whether you're doing yoga or any weight bearing in the hands. And you can see one reason is because the angle of your wrist is really extreme, almost 90 degrees. So what the pad does is it lifts your heel of the hand, and so you have the same pressure but less angle on the wrist. That's why it's going to be safer and easier when you do that. So you just basically have your fingers going over the edge and your heels lifted on your hands. That's going to really help take the pressure off your wrist. So, yep, so cat cow. So you're basically moving the three parts of your spine. So you've got the cervical, the neck, the thoracic, the middle, and the lumbar, the lower. And so focus really on the lower two. The neck is the last one. It's the easiest one to move, so people often over move their neck and they under move the others. So exhale cat and it's domed and rounded. And then inhale cow and the pelvis tilts all the way back. Think of the whole pelvic bowl tilting back and forth. And then the shoulder blades also sliding down and in and together. And then broadening apart. So think of those parts as well as your spine moving back and forth and again with that padding it just can make such a difference if that's painful at all on your knees or your wrists uh, as well so try that and see how it feels if you get cramping on your toes or your feet you can also point your toes that works both directions either have them up or down doesn't matter good so take as long as you like you can do these longer if you want if you're good from here we'll move to the bird dog. And it's pretty much the same position, but now you're going to add uh, a little bit of a challenge. So you can start off by simply extending one leg out and in, back and forth. You can draw the knee in and out, and just focus on the leg, okay? And then if you want to add a challenge, you can add the opposite hand, out and in. Now this is where it can help with padding, and, uh, but it actually makes it more challenging because you're less stable. So you're going to be working those quick twitch muscles, those little reflexive muscles, a whole lot more. So you, yeah, so you might want to do less, okay? Switch sides if you want there. Yeah. And it's totally fine to just start with one leg and do that for a while, and then maybe just the hand for a while before you combine the two. So a couple key points here, you want to avoid tilting the pelvis too far from side to side. You kind of imagine that you've got a glass of water sitting on your sacrum and keeping that really stable, keeping your awareness in the hips, keeping it stable and strong. And the back heel is going out and the toes are pointing down. So you're really extending right through the heel and you want to avoid weather veining where the, the back foot kind of wanders all over the place. Okay. Yeah, so give it a couple of rounds on each side. 
you can add the hands. And you can even hold and pause at that full extension for a little while and really feel those quick twitch, those vibrations happening because of the extra instability from the balance pad. All right, so we're doing quite a lot here. You can take breaks, okay? Don't overdo it. Uh, yeah, that doesn't take long for that exercise to start feeling it. And you can might you might uh, a nice counter pose is a child's pose. So if you want, you can just uh, bring your hips back, your arms forward, and just take a short little break here. Stretch out, let those back muscles relax. Now, one thing you can do with the balance pad too that we we actually didn't mention is if you if you're doing child's pose and your head is really dropping quite far, you can stack up and put your forehead on it, right? And so you can see the angle of the neck is a whole lot less. Can you feel the difference there? Yeah. So you can adjust the, uh, the support of your head. So using one balance pad, sometimes even just in a child's pose by itself, just putting one pad under can make a big difference. Okay, so you got a bonus pose there. <laughs> okay, so the next one is downward dog. And there's a couple ways you can use this. Um, one is the same one we mentioned earlier is that one of the most common complaints in downward dog is wrist pain so you can just put your hands beyond the edge and the other uh, challenge with downward dog is bringing the heels down toward the ground so what we can do is is lift this up and you can actually put this behind yeah you might need to rearrange a little bit so that the backs yeah the toes are on the floor and the pad is helping the backs of the heels elevate a little bit. Now, it might take a little getting used to because you might be sliding a little bit, so take it slow. It's okay to keep the knees bent to start with. And think about the spine getting longer and the pelvis kind of tilting forward so that there's more of like a rounding in your lower back. That's really what you're aiming for. And then gradually, the, the knees will straighten and the heels will press down. Yeah, so take your time with this. And you might not use the hands, maybe just use the feet or vice versa. You can, you know, mix and match as needed here. Child's pose. Yeah, child's pose is always a good go-to in between poses, okay? All right, good. And now just two more. So now the next one is a plank pose. Um, so again, um, if you want to use this for your knees or your wrists, you have your choice there. Uh, if you want to do a plank for your knees, that's okay. So we're going to come onto our forearms. This can feel good in the knees as well. All right. Yeah, so it's a good idea to start plank on the knees until you really build up the strength. If you can do this 30 seconds or so, that's when you can then go to your toes. Bringing my knees off the balance pad there, if you can see that. You know, legs are straight. And then the more advanced pose would be to go up to sort of a push up position with your arms. If you're doing that, um, the, the arms are straight under your shoulders. All right, you're sort of a full plank here. You could do some push ups if you want. All right, but nice to just be on your elbows. Yeah. And it's, a, and it's an interesting thing because the balance pad gives you more cushion and, and um, a little bit softer, more comfortable feeling, but it can also make it more challenging because your body is having to compensate for that instability. And so it might actually feel like it's working harder and it might actually be. So uh, don't be alarmed if that feels very different. Yeah, so you can take breaks there. Uh, the, another, we can go back into it, but another way to make this pose more challenging, right, is start to add one leg kick at the end this is a really good one. Makes the time pass a little bit faster. Uh -huh. <laughs> so kick is in quotes, very controlled and slow, okay? Not like a, a fast momentum filled kick, just really slow. Yeah. All right, so our last one, and hopefully you're all warmed up now, is a boat pose. So this is a seated one, and this is where the, uh, the wider balance pad works well. Um, so yeah, scoot back a little bit, and I'll show you a version um, a couple versions here, and there is one that you can use the balance bar to actually make it a little bit uh, more safe. So I'd say the first thing to do, you might just roll roll your butt and your hips a little bit, right? And the 
massage out and get comfortable there. As soon as I sit on the ground, sitting on the ground is one of the hardest things for me because of my lower back. As soon as I sit on the ground, it really wants to, to, to round. And so we want to get those, that, that belly button forward, so sort of pushing your stomach forward, creating that bend in your lower back. All right, and then if we drop the knees from side to side, all right, it helps us keep that arch while just stretching out the different muscle fibers. And then if you're ready for the boat, so I'd suggest start with your hands behind you. So that's going to really help, like Mike was saying, to, to not round the back, but to rather arch a little bit in the lower back, keeping that nice curve in your lumbar spine. And then you can just slowly raise one leg or the other or both. You can kind of warm it up a little. Don't just jump right into the most advanced pose, okay? Just start slowly, get warmed up. Even if you're confident that you can do more advanced poses, it's still a good idea to start slowly and warm it up because your body might remember doing it last week, but if you haven't warmed up, it's not going to feel the same on your body. You can overdo it. So then when you're ready, you can lift both legs and maybe even lift your arms. And you can hold behind the knees. Now this is where the balance bar can really help because you can put it under the knees and then you you put your palms face up and you can actually pull with your arms and that draws the belly button forward and that gives you what you need to keep the spine straight and you're using the core instead of over straining the back right and then your legs can come up gradually now you do want to be careful because there's more risk of falling backward so this is where you might want to spread out some pillows behind you if you have any concerns make sure absolutely that you're not close to a wall you need to make sure that if you fall backward, your head will not hit anything. So put some cushions down, pillows, if you're at all worried about rolling backward. This is really nice though with this balance bar uh, behind the legs. It just takes all the pressure off. I don't have to you know, reach you know, past the knees to hold on. Just a nice, easy thing to grip. All right, bringing that belly button forward. All right, I'm feeling my core. All right, working really hard even to just stay in this pose, but you know all the pressure is in the abdominal muscles and not on the spine. All right, hopefully yeah. your boat has sailed all the way to your destination now. That's a tough one. So yeah, these are some easy exercises you can do uh, on the ground with the balance pads. We really highly recommend uh, people get these. They make all the balance exercises a little more accessible, less painful, and a little more beneficial. So if you know anyone that could benefit from these, please share the video, like it, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, all right? And we'll get more videos out to you and keep showing you fun ways to, to build and expand your, your, your balanced gym, all right, and your home exercise routines. Yeah, so thanks so much for watching. I'm Nate. I'm Mikey. And until next time, stay, stay balanced, balanced, my friends. friends.